What's up guys, Alvaro here and welcome to the bilingual stock market channel again. On this channel we talk about the markets and we do it in English and Spanish as well so you can pick your preferred language. And in this video and as I do it Mondays through Thursdays I want to make a quick stock market update so I want to break down some technicals going over S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 and also at the end of this video, I am going to break down from a technical standpoint AMC Entertainment, Starbucks and Robin Hood markets. So with that further ado, let's get right into the video. And today we had a reversal day. So I don't know if we have a turnaround Wednesday, but today we had a turnaround Wednesday. So the Russell 2000 was the best performing index going up 1.01%. Nasdaq went up 0.0%. 82%, Dow Jones went up 0.68%, and the good old S&P 500 went up today 0.85%. And if we take a look, guys, at the sectors that trade inside the S&P 500, we almost had a green day all across the board inside the S&P 500. The best performing sector today was energy going up 3.73% and we only had one single sector that closed today's trading session in negative territory. And I'm talking about utilities. And for the most part, guys, uh, the utilities sector is considered a defensive sector. So, and for the most part, when we see the tech sector having a phenomenal day like, like today, the tech sector went up today 0.88%, we are likely to see the utilities sector going down. And if you guys remember, I have been telling you, watch out for financials and tech going up at the same time. These two sectors are by far the most important sectors inside the S&P 500 and that's exactly what happened today and I have been telling you guys whenever these two sectors pull up at the same time we are going to see the S&P 500 going higher so take a look at how the financial sector went up today 0.92% and the tech sector went up today 0.88% and now let's go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500. And by the way, guys, before going over the S&P 500, I wanted to show you two trades that I, one trade that I took today and with which I lost money, SPXS. I was trying to short the markets and, uh, and th that's the reason why I want to show you this position because I want to show you what was my mistake so i picked up 200 shares at 21 dollars and 35 cents and i ended up cutting the loss at 21 dollars and 11 cents so i paid 4269 dollars and i ended up exiting this trade being paid 4222 dollars so i ended up losing over here something like 50 or 52 bucks so what was my mistake guys so let me zoom in here on the 4-hour chart and keep in mind that the S&P went up today 0.85% and it closed today's trading session at 4,480 points. So this morning, guys, as soon as the trading session opened, the bearers of the S&P were trying to take on 44.40. Let me pull up here real quick the one day, one minute, because I think that, yeah, take a look. 44.40 was broken to the downside for a matter of minutes and this was the moment in which I actually picked up the 200 shares of SPXS that I just showed you guys. So what was my reasoning over here, guys? Well, I was thinking that if 4440 happened to be broken definitely to the downside, then I was thinking that the bears were going to be able to fill the gap down to the next important area of lower support for the S&P 500 at 4,395 points, 4,400 for argument's sake. Let's round it up, 4,400. So if I were able to take this trade the way that I am describing it, uh, you are, we are looking at a profit of almost 1%. And remember that SPXS is a leveraged ETF that amplifies any move to the downside of the S&P 500 times 3. So I was going to be able to make a profit of almost 3% over here. 
but that kind of leveraged ETF are only meant for day trading and I think that they are also meant for overnight trading but I am very careful when I whenever I start a trade with any leveraged ETF so I ended up cutting the loss and playing it safe and <laughs> now that I take a look at the S&P 500 with you guys over here I did the right thing guys if I had held on my shares then I would be having as of now a non not, not an unbelievable loss but I would be having a sizable loss of almost 3%. So the S&P 500 made a move to the made a move to the upside similar to the one that I was waiting to the downside. So my trade was absolutely run and I cut the loss, so that's fine because I only took a small loss over here. So the fact guys that the bulls managed to close today's trading session above 4470 is very but very bullish. We are getting closer now to the 50 SMA on the 4 hour chart. So in tomorrow's trading session, the bulls need to take on this 50 SMA on the 4 hour chart and maybe pay a visit or why not take on 4500 guys. That That's in the cards. Take a look at the relative strength index of the S&P 500. It is at 47 points. So we know for sure that the S&P is in a very healthy condition as of now from a relative strength strength index standpoint so we could see the bulls tomorrow taking on as I just said this 50 SMA and filling the gap up to 4500 and maybe possibly bursting above 4500 keep a close watch on tomorrow guys obviously on 4470 that's a very important area of previous support that already acted as such for the bulls of the S&P back on August 27 and it also did it back on August 26th and we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the S&P failed back on August 16. So is the possible correction that we are supposedly going to see in the markets over no absolutely not the bulls need to take on 4500 in order to take control of the s p 500 once again so watch out tomorrow for 4500 as overhead resistance and as support the first important area of lower support is going to be 4470 and if that area of lower support happens to be broken to the downside then obviously guys 4440 which is an area of support in which the bears of the S&P felt yesterday and today as well and in the case of the Nasdaq 100 this index went up today 0.78% and it closed today's trading session at 15,503 points so I am going to zoom in here on the 4 hour chart and guys the bulls are once again in control of the Nasdaq 100 we closed above 15,500 points we can make the case that as of now the 50 SMA on the 4 hour chart is acting as resistance but the bulls just need to make a little push higher tomorrow let's say that uh, the bulls can start to close hourly above 15,515 points, 15,520 points that is going to be very but very bullish and if we take a look at the relative strength index of the Nasdaq 100 it is at 51 points, very but very healthy from a technical standpoint so tomorrow the main area of lower support for the bulls 15,500 points and maybe Tomorrow the bears can take the Nasdaq 100 down to 15,400 points which is an area, a level in which the bears of the Nasdaq 100 have failed on one, two and three occasions during the last three trading sessions. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the first stock of this video. AMC Entertainment and by the way guys and before going over AMC let me show you a put option that I sold in today's trading session on Win Resort so let me pull up here Win and you guys know that Win has gotten absolutely decimated guys on, on news that the Chinese government or the government of the province of Macau is going to impose some sort of regulations over the casinos that operate 
in Macau. So we will see what happens with that. And I think that the concession, the commercial concession that Wynn Resort is uh, operating with expires next year in 2022. So most analysts are saying that that isn't going to affect the long term story of Wynn Resort. And most analysts are also stating that common ground is going to be found between Wynn Resort and the Chinese government. And I think that this is a very valid reopening play. So today I sold the $90 put that expires on October 29 and I was paid $910, guys. Is Win Resorts going to be below $90 on October 29? That's a possibility, no doubt about it. But I don't really mind picking up 100 shares of Win Resorts at $90. And if Win Resorts obviously guys happens to be above $90 by October 29, then I I am going to end up getting here or making a $910 profit. I mean, I already made this money regardless of whatever happens with Win Resorts, but I think that this is a no-brainer, guys. I don't I don't mind buying 100 shares of Win at $90 one month out or one month and a half out and on top of that i made today 910 dollars so this was a very nice uh, trade in my opinion today for me and in the case of amc entertainment so the stock of this company went down today 0.97 percent and it closed today's trading session at 46 dollars and 84 cents so let me zoom in here on the four hour shirt and guys we are pretty much a slightly below the 50 sma on the four hour shirt that is no good for amc however we can still make the case that AMC is still uptrending on the 4-hour chart and the fact that we are above the 180 SMA on this chart implies that the golden cross that unfolded back on August 26th is still in effect over here. So I'm thinking, guys, that if tomorrow AMC pay a visit down to $42, that is going to be a spot in which uh, AMC is very likely to find support at, and that is going to be an interesting spot in order to pick up some shares of AMC. $42 is a previous area of resistance in which the bulls of AMC failed back on late July, but we are also talking about a former area of support that already acted as such for AMC on two occasions back in the beginning of June. So, <clears throat> If AMC happens to pay a visit down to the 42 bucks and we pick up some shares of the stock of this company, then a reasonable price target is going to be 48 bucks, which is a, a, a level, a, a point, let's say an area in which the bulls of AMC are having a lot of, of difficulty with. So $48 is an area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of AMC have failed on one, two, three, and four, and five occasions in recent days. So this, this might be an interesting trade, guys. If we pick up shares of AMC at $42, and if we sell out of those shares at $48, we could be making a 21% percent profit so what's out tomorrow for amc potentially paying a visit down to 42 dollars finding a good support over there and then bouncing back up and the second stock of this video is going to be a stock that got absolutely killed guys today starbucks and i think that i haven't uh, talked about Starbucks in quite a while here on the channel. So Starbucks had today its worst day since January of this year, guys, going down 3.55% and closing today's trading session at $114.64. So I am going to pull up here the live news tab and what gave rise to this massive sell-off that we saw today in the case of Starbucks. So I am going to read here for you guys. Starbucks shares are trading lower. Weakness is possibly in sympathy with Jump China, which dipped after giving a business update and noting a negative impact from the COVID-19 Delta variant. So keep in mind that Starbucks has 5,100 coffee shops in China. So this might be signaling that Starbucks is going to eventually report uh, worse than expected sales in China. We will see what that 
plays uh, out like. But this is a this is a decent uh, dip, guys. I think that I think that this is a, a legit dip. I didn't pick up some shares of Starbucks because it was today actually looking like a falling knife, and I don't like picking up falling knives. Even though I have some friends that say that I actually like to do it, but I am very careful when I see a stock falling like this. And I want to see tomorrow, guys. Uh, this is going to be by far the stock that is going to be on the very top of my personal watch list so if a starbucks happens to consolidate a slightly above 114 dollars tomorrow if i happen to see starbucks trading somewhere between 100 114 dollars and 30 cents or 114 dollars and 50 cents if i start to see starbucks closing hourly within that range i am going to be absolutely tempted in order to pick up some shares of starbucks so 114 dollars is a previous area of lower support that already acted as such for starbucks back on august 20th but we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of this stock failed back in late june they also failed back in late may and lastly they failed back in april so we are talking about a very important previous area of support and resistance if i happen to pick up some shares of starbucks at 114 dollars and 50 cents 114 dollars and 30 cents each then my price target is going to be the next important area of overhead resistance for Starbucks at $120.63 each. Let's say $120. $120 is a previous area of resistance in which the bulls of Starbucks failed back on September 10. But we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the stock of this company failed back in mid-July. If I were able to take this trade the way that I am describing, Describing it, picking up some shares near $114.50 each and selling out of those shares at $120, I could be making a profit of almost 6%, a very nice profit. And if we take a look at the relative strength index, it is at 32 points, so Starbucks is definitely in a buy zone. So watch out for ticker symbol SBUX keep on consolidating a slightly above $114. And now let's go ahead and take a look at Hood, which is going to be the last stock of this video. And as of now, guys, I am holding the back. Let me show you in the case of Hood. And I, I'm, I, I want to share with you what is going to be my plan in order to close this position. So in the case of Hood, I have... 100 shares at an average cost of $44.21 and as of now I have an unrealized loss of $255. So if tomorrow guys I happen to see and by the way Robinhood went up today 4.62% and it closed today's trading session at $41.87. So the stock of this company guys is at a very tricky spot. And why? Well, because we are seeing over here the coincidence of a former area of lower support that already acted as such for Hood back on August 31st. It also did it back on August 20th, but it also did it back on August 3rd at approximately $42.20. And over there, over that area, we have the coincidence, the convergence of the 50 SMA on the 4-hour chart. So if tomorrow, guys, I happen to see Hood bursting above the previous area of support and resistance that is coinciding with the 50 SMA on the 4-hour chart near $42 and starting to consolidate slightly above that area, I am going to pick up 100 more shares, 100 more shares, sorry, of Hood in order to average down my current position and I am going to sell one covered call and I am going to keep for myself the other 100 shares. By doing so, I am going to be able to perceive the premium that I am going to be paid for having sold a covered call, but at the same time, I am going to have 100 shares available in order to write them up in case 
we see a nice rally in the case of hood so if i were able to take this trade the way that i am describing it let's say that i end up having an average cost of 43 dollars and 50 cents each and if I happen to sell 100 shares at the next or at the other important area of overhead resistance for hood near $49, I could be making a profit over the 100 shares that I just told you guys about of 12%. $49 is a previous area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of hood already failed on one, two, three, four, and five occasions in recent days. So watch out for hood, guys. I think that if the stock of this company happens to burst above $42 and starts to consolidate slightly above $42, that is going to be a sign that the bulls are gathering momentum in order to fill the gap up to $4. $49. And with the Robin Hood markets, I am going to wrap up the video. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for hanging out with me once again. Remember and keep in mind, guys, that here on the Bilingual Stock Market channel, we are posting a stock market update videos Mondays through Thursdays, three or four hours after the market closes. So if you want to get all of the notifications of all of our videos in a timely manner, you have to be subscribed to the channel, but you also need to activate the notification bell right up there follow us on instagram as well guys at bilingual stock market and remember that this is the bilingual stock market channel the youtube channel in which we talk about the markets but we do it in english and spanish as well so you can pick your preferred language but most importantly this is the youtube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of wall street is not for geniuses it is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself my name is alvaro and i will see you guys tomorrow once again, three or four hours or maybe five hours after the market closes. Peace out.